What's going on, Attract Passive Income followers? Uh, this really isn't my first podcast, but this is uh, the the first one is actually going up. <clears throat> and I have my main man, Tom, here out of uh, Australia. Now, Tom was one of my coaching students. He uh, found me through YouTube. And uh, we had a very, very interesting first beginning. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that. So, uh, Tom, how how is it going up there in uh, Australia? Yeah, it's wonderful here in Australia. It's summertime. The days are long. The weather's good. It's just a, it's a great place to be right now in Melbourne. So, yeah. Well, I should have said down there instead of up there. <laughs> yeah. Depends on your perspective. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, what, I think where should I start, Tom? You know what? I'm going to start when we first met. Now, when we first met, um, yep. let's talk about our first meeting. What, what do we find out about you that you didn't know about yourself before you called me? Well, um, the, the thing we found out was, well, I, that actually had been told to me by other people. I'd never actually acknowledged it, but I found out that I had a learning disability um, known as attention deficit disorder. And I, you pretty much said, uh, I, I think I came to the, the realization independent of you, but your, your advice certainly led me to, to do some, some more research on the, on the issue. And then I was like, yes. And I had it, uh, I had it confirmed as well by a professional and yeah, basically, that was what led me to find out and acknowledge for myself that I had attention deficit disorder. And I don't like to lean on more of the disorder part because I honestly think it does have its setbacks, but it definitely has some advantages also. It, it, the word disorder, I, yeah, I don't really think it's a disorder. It's more of a different way of life. Attention deficit disorder is a different way of life. It's mm -hmm. a different way of seeing the world, and yeah, it's it's a very exhilarating life <laughs> we, when you when you actually realise that you have it, and you kind of harness the positive sides of it. Yeah, exactly. Now, Tom, I'll have to say your life is very interesting, and oh, uh, <laughs> I think we're going. I think we should just start there. And I'm gonna tell yeah. I'm gonna tell you guys why his life is interesting. Tom is about to do something that would scare the crap out of a lot of people. I mean, some people step out of their comfort zone, but Tom is really about to step out of his comfort yeah. zone, and I love every minute of it. So yeah, let's let's go a little bit into that, uh, Tom. What does tell us something that we? probably wouldn't think by just looking at you. Tell us what language you, you speak fluently. Um, well, I speak Chinese right now. Um, I've been learning it for about a year and a half, and I'm, I can speak it pretty well. I'm certainly not anywhere near a, a native level speaker, but in, in the year and a, lot and a half I've done, I've been learning Chinese for, I've just loved every minute of it, and I've just become addicted to it. So mm -hmm. it's just like, yeah, every day is really fun for me learning that language. So that's, yeah, that's the thing. I, I can speak Chinese. So. Well, if you don't mind, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Uh, oh, yeah. Just just tell us something real quick. Now, you speak Mandarin or uh, Cantonese? I speak Mandarin, yeah. Mandarin. Hua is what it's known to Chinese people, yeah. Tell, Common. Us, tell us a long phrase and then tell us what it means after that. Just, just let me hear something. Um, Okay, uh, 大家好,我是高兴,我是英语老师,来自澳大利亚,我学习中文一年半. Uh, uh, so that was, just a, that was just a very simple introduction, like, hi, my name's Tom, I'm an English teacher, uh, I've studied Chinese for a year and a half. So that's pretty simple, like, um, yeah, but that's just something, that's an example. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All I know is ni hao ma. That's <laughs> ni hao ma. But ni hao, if you can say ni hao ma, uh -huh. that's actually pretty impressive because a lot of people just say ni hao. So if you have the ma on the end, okay. which makes it into a question. So are you good? Like, um, that's good. 
so that's a good start. Like when I started, I didn't even know Ni Hao. I knew I knew Ni Hao Ma. I only knew Ni Hao. And I, yeah, so. <laughs> so you <laughs> got to start you're, from you're doing somewhere. Better than me when I started, yeah. Now, Tom, when we first talked, you your life was very different. What were you doing when we first talked for the first time? What was your occupation? Well, I was I was working as a carpentry apprentice. Um, yeah, which is it was it wasn't a bad job. Like I think it's a really honest and good way of. Um, and I definitely really enjoy the skills that I got from that. But yeah, I I've moved from that now because of just some opportunities that have come up that, you know, you only have one shot at life and yeah, I had, I had to take these opportunities cause they were just too good to, yeah, too good to risk. But yeah, I was, I was a apprentice carpenter for, for a year. So yeah. A year. Yep. So let's just say, Tom, we don't want to make sure, make people believe that this was just an easy transition from you moving from there and now you're getting ready to leave for China in a week or so. Yeah. You had some obstacles that you yeah. had to go through in order to get there. Um, w- would you talk on that a little bit? Yeah. Um, well, you you get yourself, you're in a life situation, for example, where you're comfortable, you're living somewhere, you have interpersonal relationships with various people and I don't know, you get into a you get into a way of going like, you know, this is this is how I'm I'm going to live my life. Um and so yeah, I wasn't in a position to make the decision. It, it was actually a really hard decision to make mm-hmm. because um yeah, there was a there was a few things. I was in a relationship at the time. Um I have family, you know, family here in Australia who you know, would probably prefer it if I was in Australia. Not that they want to hold me back from achieving my dreams, but, and, you know, so there's all these things. And um, it's very easy to just not, it would have been very, very easy just to stay in Australia and, and leave it as a dream. But I think eventually I got to a point where, doing this, going to China meant so much to me and um, that I just had to do it at, and you know, it, that's basically it. Yeah. But you know, you actually, when I, when I first met you, you actually had a job that you were actually applying for as a, I think it was a disc jockey or something of that nature. Oh, uh, it was, well, I'll tell you the story of this. Um, so as I'll, I'll tell you the whole story of how I, but yeah, I was in the process of applying for a job working at a radio station in Beijing that spoke English. Okay. Um, it was an English-speaking radio station, and I've I've actually been interviewed on that radio station from here in Australia. But that's um, so. What happened was I got I've done some work here in Australia as an English host for the Chinese radio station here in Melbourne. And that's part of a larger network of radio stations. And so through that, I sent a, a CV off to this, this, this radio station in China. And, you know, I just had a bit of my experience. And I mentioned that I could speak um, Chinese on the, on the thing. And I didn't really think any of, anything of that at the time. And I actually honestly just assumed that, nah, it's just going to get, you know, go into someone's junk mail and I'm never going to see it again. Um, but I got a call from a guy speaking Mandarin and I was just like, Oh, can you please, I was speaking to him and he's like, can you please speak English? Can you please speak English? And I just said to him, um, Oh, okay. So we had a bit of a talk for about five minutes and then I was like really struggling to understand what he was saying. And then after five minutes, he just got, said, Oh, actually I'm, I can speak English. I'm the you know manager of this department at this radio station, we've got a job coming up and would you like to apply for the job? And I, and when that happened, I was just like this, it was this, that was the moment when that happened. I suddenly just went, my life has more possibilities than I had ever imagined before. Like I never, you know, in my wildest dreams 
would have imagined at any time I get a phone call from someone speaking in Chinese and then, you know, be offered a job in Beijing. It was just wildest dream. So when that happened, I was that was the moment that I knew I was going to go to China um, because wow. I just, yeah, it just made me so excited. And eventually I wasn't successful in getting the job, but I, I, I decided that even if I didn't get that job, because it was a difficult job to get, and um, I, I'd get another job, and I did. And, yeah, I took a position at a, a university in Heilongjiang teaching English. So, yeah, that's what happened. And, and you see, what, what's so funny about that was is that you weren't, like, totally confident you were going to get that job. But you had, what I liked about you were you say, look, even if I don't get this job, I'm still going to China. I'm still, yeah. I'm still fulfilling my dream. Whereas some people yeah. are like, ah, oh, you know, I had a setback, so let me just, you know, sit back and say, hey, you know what? Maybe China isn't for me. Yeah. You know? I think, yeah, I think with when, well, with me, once I figured out what I really wanted to do with my life, um, and it's not really, it's not really a specific thing. I think once I decided who I wanted to be, I think. That was the most, that was the realization. I decided the kind of person I wanted to be. Then it became very easy to make, make the decisions that I did. And when you receive a setback, like I really wasn't discouraged at all. After I actually was unsuccessful at getting the job, I was like, right, now I'm, I'm really, really want to work hard on all this stuff and create more opportunities for myself. So, yeah. Now, let's, let the audience know too because some people say well hey this guy could be rich his family could be sending him over there you know yeah how do we know it's easy for this guy just let the let the uh attract passive income followers know that hey it, it wasn't that easy when it came to money to go there um yeah well i well first of all i've been financially independent since i was 19 Oh, well, I mean, since I was 18, I was living in my parents' house for one year after finishing school. But from the age of 19 and onwards, I've been, like, taking care of all my own financial needs. So I'm not, like, I've, yeah, and I don't really rely on my family for, for finance. Um, and obviously working as a carpentry apprentice, the money was not, was not good. Well, it wasn't really, yeah, if you don't do it for the money. You do it so you can learn the skill. But yeah, I mean, the job in China, I'll I'll get enough money. I'm not going to earn like good Australian money, but I'm going to earn decent Chinese money. So like um yeah, having the job is is the important thing because that that gives me the security in China to to you know, to know I'm going to be able to afford the cost of of living. Yeah. Okay. Now let me ask you a question. Now, do you have any of your family members or your friends or something saying right now, man, are you like you're going to China right now? Like, um, do you have any talk like that I, going on? Um, uh, yeah, I think, um, not necessarily. Well, I think any time you'd make a, an out there decision, like from the moment, I, let's just say from the moment one and a half years ago, one day I woke up and I decided I'm going to, I'm going to learn Chinese. And when I said that, um, and straight away people go are you crazy Tom you've never learned a language before Chinese is the hardest language you're just going to give up after two weeks you know that kind of stuff um, so when I first started Chinese I was very scared to tell other people that I was doing it I was kind of ashamed um, to tell to tell other people about it because I was really afraid that they would you know think I was going to fail or, or whatever um and, you know, then you make other decisions, like, example, sending this CV off to a radio station. Like, the, why would you do that? You know, it's, this is, why would they want you? They're a Chinese radio station, you know, you're, you, you don't even speak Chinese that well. But, it, you know, that opened up an opportunity. And uh, then when I went to China, um, even the choice of going to the place I'm going to, the place I'm going to, is Heilongjiang. If you don't know where that is, it's in the far north of China. It's on the border of Russia. It's wow. the most it's the most underdeveloped place in China. And as I said, I'm expecting to be the only 
really native English speaker I know. I'm expecting to be that. There may be one or two others, but I'm going in with like prepared for that. And, you know, you get a lot of people who when I tell them that they're like, oh, this is, you know, that they're saying like, it's cold. You're not going <laughs> to actually, I've even had, I've even had two friends of mine tell me that you're not going to make it. Oh, and, um, come on, man. They, who know about this area. Now I'm, I actually like that because when I succeed at this place, and we've got it on recording here. When I succeed a year later, exactly. we can look back at this. We'll have an interview with me in a year time. And once I've made it through the year and I've advanced my speaking ability and I've had all these experiences, then we can look back and go, go that, I'm, that I made it. But I'm not, I'm not under the delusion that it's going to be easy. It's going to be very, very um, difficult. It's going to be very uncomfortable. Um, it's going to force me to do things and behave in ways and, you know, to, to survive and to be a happy person there that I don't have to behave in here. And the idea of this experience, the idea is to really push the limits of my comfort zone to as far as I can go. So away from family, away from English speakers, away from the kind of climate or environment that I'm accustomed to here in Australia. Mm -hmm. And by being there, it's going to force me to form new friendships. It's going to force me to learn to live in this environment. And as a result of being forced to do that, I'm going to have all these new skills um, that will hopefully that will stack, that I'll have for the, for the rest of my life and experiences that I'll have for the rest of my life. So that's kind of the, the way I'm thinking about it. <laughs> you know what I caught, Tom, when you were just talking? I caught yep. two things. I caught you saying that your friends said, why would you want to learn Chinese? That's one of the hardest yeah. languages, but they've never yeah. studied Chinese. And then you had someone tell you, oh, you're going to fail at that. But I guarantee you they've never been to this area <laughs> that you were about to go to. Uh, so well, actually, no, the, the, um, the people who are, I'll actually say that the people who have said have actually gone. Um, oh, they went to that area. Yeah, one one is a friend of mine who uh, who lived in the lived in the region. Okay. Um, yeah. So, and I and I probably think that a lot of people would. Fa I, I think yeah. Her assumption of her making that statement is actually a fairly accurate way to think about like most people who are in my situation who've lived their whole life in Australia, who've lived in relative comfort for all their lives, probably wouldn't in, have an enjoyable time where, where they're going. And I'm aware of the fact that most people wouldn't enjoy what I'm going to do. But for me, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's all about, it's all about the challenge and overcoming that. And yeah. So, yeah, but um, the thing is, you know, having this, I guess in the past, maybe when I was younger and more impressionable, having this kind of negative energy coming towards me. Actually, no, I don't think, I think always when people say you can't do something, it makes me even more resolved to do it and even more strengthened in my ambition to do something. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, I've been, you know, I, we've talked about this before. I've been to China. I've been to, uh, been to Hong Kong and the North, Northern China. I've been to a place called, one I always miss it. I think it's called One Joe. One yep. Joe. One Joe. It's probably Guangzhou. I don't know, but yeah. Yeah, Guangzhou. That's actually south. Uh, but mm. One Joe is 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 somewhere I went uh, north. But man, I take my hat off to you, man. Doing what you're doing right now is amazing. You know. Yeah. I think it's in your genes. Um, we we talked about this in one of our coaching sessions. Uh, we won't say the company, but. Uh, your grandfather was a pretty interesting guy in Australia. Yeah. Yeah, well, I had a grandfather who was the CEO of a, a fairly large company in Australia. It's an international company, but he was the CEO in Australia. So in some ways, yeah, I think maybe, um, yeah, I don't know, me doing this, having this ambition, somehow his genes may have, I don't think I'm ever going to be a CEO, but uh, <laughs> never know. 
No, there may no. be some positive genes that allowed him to uh, become a successful CEO that, have, that may have fallen down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're about a week away from your trip. Uh, yep. Are there any nervous ideas or anything that's going through your head right now? Or are you completely confident? Um, yeah, I'm feeling completely confident. I'm, I'm just pretty much waiting to, waiting to go. I'm kind of already mentally, um, in, in China because the situation is I'm waiting for my visa to get processed and I, I need a working visa to enter. So I've kind of been waiting for about a month for this to be, to all be processed. But once that's, yeah, once that's done, I'm, I'm going to head over and, um, yeah, I've got a lot of, um, a lot of exciting experience to look forward to even when um before i start my job because i'm going to be just traveling around a bit and um yeah and so that'll be good meeting up with hopefully meeting some people who who i you know got in contact with before and yeah so I'll, i should say this yeah i'm gonna one thing i'm looking forward to i'd like to I did I tell you about how I did an interview with Jasmine Chen, a Chinese jazz singer? Did I tell you about that? No, you ever? Didn't. No. Oh, okay. Um, I this is this is an idea of of how the how the mind works. So one day I was looking around on what was it on YouTube, and I kind of like jazz music and I also like learning Chinese. And I found this this video of a Chinese jazz singer. And I like then I clicked onto her homepage, and then I, and then I found her Weibo, which is the Chinese version of Twitter. And okay. I sent a message to her saying, "Oh, I've um, I've got some contact with this radio station here in Melbourne. If you're if you're interested, uh, I could organise an interview for you." And and I was just really liked her, her music, so I was like, "Oh, I hope she really con contacts me." And she sent me a message back. And then I was able to organize to do an interview with, with her. And, uh, yeah, and so now if I go to Shanghai, I might even have the opportunity to meet this singer. So that's something else I'm looking forward to. So Jasmine Chen is her name if you look it up on ja YouTube. So. Jasmine Chen, okay. Jasmine Chen, yeah. So she plays, yes, she's a jazz singer. And she's a bit of a maverick as well. I wrote an article about her. So, so okay. training classical piano and then rebelled and went to jazz singing. So, yeah. Well, I tell you what, Tom, we definitely, now I'm sure that the internet is, hopefully is pretty good in the area that you're actually going. Yeah, yeah. You know? So yeah, so. No, what were you going to say? I'm sorry? Oh, I said, yeah. So, yeah, we can probably have an interview and see. Yeah, <laughs> like, we definitely want maybe, to get an update. <laughs> yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll see how I'm going. What I'll be like, I'll be sitting there freezing my ass off in a massive coat and... <laughs> Um, <laughs> and there'll be fog fogging up the webcam so <laughs> well, yeah. well you know Tom here's the thing man what I like about you is this you know I have a YouTube channel and I get so many questions from people who are just don't have enough courage to yeah. pursue their dream and I'm actually talking to a guy who is stepping outside of his comfort zone a guy that easily could have been stuck doing the apprentice work you know as you know or being a carpenter for 20, 30 years. But now, with the decision that you're making, you're stepping out of that comfort zone, and who knows yeah. what else you will, yeah. will, will conquer. It, it's like once, I'll, I'll take, I'll just say about is since getting out of the, the nine to five job, kind, it's just amazing the stuff you can do. It's just, yeah. It's like not only in terms of what you can achieve for yourself but in terms of the way your mind starts working like um for me yeah like you know all these wonderful just in just in my life i've spent a month kind of waiting to go to china so i've not been uh, officially employed but this the stuff i'm done like today i'm i'm going to uh what is it a it's a it's an, a general meeting for an an a non-for-profit organization called Language Connection. Um, that's actually the organization where I credit most of my Chinese learning to. So it's called Language Connection. Language it's Connection. Um, okay. Language Connection. Um, yeah, it's in Melbourne. It's it's run by a man, or it was started by by a very close friend of mine called Dan Edney. So, like, 
since since leaving the nine to five, I've been able to to have all these opportunities to do things that I really really find meaningful. Um, and so yeah, it's been a wonderful month here in here in Melbourne, just not being free of work and just being able to to you know meet lots of interesting people. I've I've been doing a lot of language exchanging. So if you don't know what that is, I meet up with someone who's um, who's from China who's living here, and we just language exchange. So yesterday I I did that with a with a guy who I was put in contact through through um, through the language connection kind of network through my friend basically. He ended up being like a radio producer at SBS on their Mandarin um, program. So we had lots of really good conversation about you know ambition and working in the media and all that kind of stuff. So it was it, yeah, it's really fun because when um, now I've stopped. Once you're kind of on a mission or something, you seem to just continually meet interesting people and have interesting experiences. And yeah, it's just so much. It's really good because every morning you wake up and you're like, "Yes, what am I going to do today? Could be anything." So <laughs> that's a wonderful so, life. Just that's what it's like. And I wake up today, and you want to interview me for your for your show, and um, it's fantastic. So yeah. Well, in so, closing, what advice? What you give to the person that is struggling right now, that has fear, want to conquer their dreams, but yep. they're just are too afraid to. What what advice would you give them? My advice, the one thing, the one change in my thinking that made all of this possible was I I always used to think, what should I do? That's what is the right thing for me to do. That was how I was thinking through everything I did. I was like, oh, I meant to continue in this job. I meant to, you know. And then one day it just, I don't mean it gradually, it changed to what do I want? What do I want for my life? And that's really what you have to ask yourself. What do I want? Not what does this person want? Not what does he want? Not, you know, it's what you want. And yeah, doing what you want feels really, really good. And, um, just just having a taste of that um, recently, it just it, it's it's to, it's totally changed my life, and um, yeah, it's just it's wonderful. And look, and it doesn't mean getting to a place that kind of place takes effort. Um, it takes difficult decisions, mm -hmm. but once you actually get to the place that you want to be, where you're living your life on your own terms. They, you, in retrospect, you're like, they were all easy decisions. I can't believe I spent so much time worrying about them. I should have just, I should have done that from the first place. So, yeah, in summary, it's just the real thing to think in everything is what do I want? Yeah, that's it. Well, thank you, Tom, for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you want to spend some last minute time with your family before you go overseas. And, yep. uh, yeah, thank you, and uh, we'll definitely stay in contact and uh, get updates about what's oh, going on. Okay. <laughs> cool. Well, well thank thanks, you, Tom. Uh, thanks, Abdul. Okay. <laughs>